That's right. In this North Stockton neighborhood, neighbors tell me they felt that earthquake while they were in their beds watching TV, while they were eating dinner at their dinner table. They also said they felt it on their drives home from work. That earth underneath them rumbling up. And they also tell me that they were a little nervous when they first felt the shake. This was the first encounter that they've had, but it's not uncommon in North Stockton to say that there would be an earthquake. They said it woke them out of their sleep before and also has kept them from going to sleep. I caught up with one father and son duo who were on the road to Manteca when the earthquake hit, and they say they didn't feel anything, but their mom, who was in downtown Stockton gave them a call immediately when she felt the ground shake. Mom called and uh, she was like she's in the building downtown the, with the big in shape building and she said they felt it pretty bad up there. Us in a panic because she thought we were like we were going to feel it but she felt it up there and we didn't feel a thing. None of the neighbors I spoke to said that there was any damage to their homes or vehicles, but they say they were frightened when they felt the earth shake underneath them, but they are safe and sound back home now. Mm -hmm. Our live crews all across the mm -hmm. region, just giving you a taste of what people experienced. We can tell you here at the ABC 10 studios, we felt it as well. Uh, rumbled for several seconds, yeah, it felt it like, uh, where you were just uh, noticing that, okay, something is going on here. So we tackled that big question, right? Did you feel it? Now we want to talk about the science. And specifically what happened to get Northern California shaking. For that, we're going to turn over to our chief meteorologist, Monica Woods. Well, it was certainly something that got a lot of people uh, up and going here during the middle of the day. Our magnitude 6.0, we've talked about this, centered right around 395, just up to the north of Markleyville. But you can see a number of dots out there with the aftershocks that happened after the main event occurred just before 350 uh, this afternoon. Multiple uh, readings as well on many monitoring stations throughout even the Central Valley and towards Yosemite. So you can see how much the shaking really rippled throughout Northern California this afternoon. And if you recall, just about two months ago, May 6th, we had that 4.7 magnitude earthquake north of Truckee. So what's going on with all this activity up in the Sierra? Let me show you the fault lines throughout Northern California. And the most, uh, the one that we recognize the most is the strike slip fault. That's over towards the coast here you see all these red lines towards the Bay Area. Now let's zoom in towards the Lake Tahoe Basin. These are called normal faults. So it's just one of three types of faults that we look at. Strike slip, the normal, and then the thrust fault. This one happened to be a normal fault. So you can see how these slabs kind of move vertically. When that happens, the earth begins to shake. Now we've also been throwing out a lot of terms out there. The epicenter, the aftershocks. Well, the hypocenter is where the shake actually begins underground. The epicenter is the surface area of where that shake actually moves through at the surface level. And the aftershocks are what happen after, like I said, the main uh, earthquake happened around 349 this afternoon. Uh, we have some wild video that was captured showing a rock slide happening during the earthquake. Yeah, this all happened at the Meadow Cliff Lodge, Colville Walker, Coa, right as the earthquake hit. Take a look. You can hear the boulders and rocks falling down that cliffside. The audio is just deafening. This all happened right near the campground as some 200 people were staying there. People working there told me that RVs were shaking, the ground was moving, and the shaking was very intense. This rock formation is some 1,000 feet high. They've always been nervous of an earthquake causing rocks to fall like this. All of a sudden we heard all this crazy noise and rumbling. And we thought, oh my gosh, what is happening? And as we looked up behind our shoulders, we could see all the dust, as you started seeing from the video, just coming down off that cliff. And then, of course, by that time, you realize the ground is actually shaking and moving, and cars and RVs and buildings are shaking back and forth. Now, Scott is from the Bay Area. He told me he has never experienced an earthquake like this than what happened today. And some experienced people have hiked up to the top of the granite cliff known as Centennial Bluffs. Every year, they often talk about what if an earthquake was to happen. Well, we are just four days off from 4th of July. Scott was up there just four days ago. Mm. He is grateful and alive to be alive and okay tonight. Mm -hmm. Especially when you see all those homes and things right down there at the right. base. Yep. He said he's going to send me some photos of, of what the actual rocks look just like down there. how massive they were. Yeah, but no damage to the property, thank goodness. Just some really shaken up guests.
Absolutely makes sense. Mm -hmm. Well, our Brandon Riddiman wanted to dig some more uh, into what happened today and what could be next. So here is what he learned from one of our local experts. I had the chance to talk with Dr. Graham Kent. He's the director of the seismology lab at the University of Nevada, Reno, over on the other side of the Sierra where this earthquake happened. And he told me when he looked at the shake map shortly after these quakes started that what he saw looked fairly textbook, but that should concern us because of the fault this happened to happen on. This is a classic um, aftershock sequence. So you'll get maybe a six and then you get a four and then some threes and a three and a half and then you get another four and then you get some twos and, and it just bounces around. Now, occasionally, um, maybe in our area, maybe upwards of 20, 25% of the time, it could be a four shot for a bigger earthquake an hour down the road, a day, even a month. The probabilities get less and less the further away you get away from it. But that was a big jolt. Um, the last 5.9 we've had in the area was back in the mid 90s. So you heard him say a 20 to 25 percent chance that this could be actually a foreshock of a bigger quake to come just by virtue of where it's happening. For comparison, um, you know, that's like a one in four, one in five chance. He says that any old fault in planet Earth, you're looking at a one in 20 chance. So there is a higher degree of risk just by virtue of where the quake happened. I do want to talk briefly about what he told me on that phantom quake that showed a 4.8 outside of Stockton in the early minutes after the shaking. Um, he says that happened because of the algorithms that process all the data coming in from the sensors all over the countryside. Basically, when you have a lot of quakes in short succession back to back to back like we had today, sometimes that can fool the algorithm into thinking that one of the waves it picks up elsewhere was in fact its own earthquake. A seismologist actually goes in very quickly after the computer picks the spot and double checks, and that's why that got lifted off the map. It turns out all these quakes are happening in the same area over on the state line with Nevada. And uh, the reason that we felt it so strongly here in Sacramento was another thing we talked about, and this was really interesting to me. He said that what we felt here would be similar to the type of shaking we would have experienced in a much stronger quake coming out of the Bay Area, something along the lines of, say, a Loma Prieta quake. And that's because of the terrain. Basically, what happens is the Earth's crust between here and the Bay Area has a lot of softness in it, and that'll dampen the shaking. But between here and where this quake happened, we're talking about the Sierra Nevada mountain range. It's a giant slab of granite. You think about shaking a solid table. We're on the other end of the table. That's why we felt it so much here. In the newsroom, Brandon Riddiman, ABC 10. Mm, Brandon, thank you. That is good perspective because that's what everyone was saying. You know, uh, folks were accustomed to hearing about earthquakes in Northern California. Right. But the fact that folks down here in the valley were experiencing so much, people were saying, what is going on? And just how much did they experience it? Well, folks in Placer County also reported feeling the earthquake. Yeah, ABC 10's Lena Howland is in Roseville tonight with their story. A lot of people I talked to here at the Roseville Fountains told me they did feel the earthquake, but only for a few moments. Now, the native Californians here told me this was nothing compared to what our state has been through over the past few decades. It was a slow roll, um, and I've been through several earthquakes before, so I immediately told my wife we're having an earthquake, and we went to go get the baby, and by the time we got the baby, the earthquake was over. David Bulow, a homeowner in Roseville, lived through both the 89 earthquake in San Francisco and the 94 earthquake in L.A., but this one, he says, wasn't nearly as serious. Some of the water from my pool spilled out, but outside of that, it was kind of nothing. Nothing compared to what we're used to uh, from the San Diego areas. While others, like Stephen Quituga, thought the movement was coming from his daughter. My chair started moving. I thought my daughter was messing with me. I kept looking under the chair, but she wasn't there. So uh, that's when I looked at other things, such as my monitors and pictures. And I did notice a, a subtle uh, movement. But Cala OES says no matter how serious you think it might be, this is what everyone should do. When the shaking starts, drop, cover, and hold on. And if you're in a place where you can't get under a piece of furniture, then um, just cover your head and hang in there. Cal OES added that their team will be at the Emergency Operations Center throughout the night, tracking any further reports of damage throughout the state.